and the Attorney General George Brandis joined me from Parliament House a short time ago. Senator Brandis, thank you for joining us. Pleasure, Lee. Politicians are elected to vote on the issues in the Parliament that represent the points of view of people in their electorate. Why are you spending $122 million on this plebiscite when you could have a vote in the Parliament tomorrow and save all that money? Well, at the last election, we promised to give the people a say. And although, as a general proposition, what you say, of course, is right, there are some issues that are so special, so unique, that we think it's best to have a direct involvement by the Australian people. And if ever there was an issue um, in which politicians have no particular wisdom um, greater than the wisdom of the general public, it's on, on an issue like marriage. I mean, marriage is the most intimate relationship between two human beings. And the views of every man and woman in Australia on this topic are of equal importance to the views of the 226 people who uh, work in this building. You, you mentioned getting the, view, the importance of getting the views of every man and woman, but polling experts say that in surveys like this they're almost never representative or reliable because the people who turn out are either those who feel extremely strongly, not just ordinary people, or the people with the most time on their hands. Well, what we want to do is to have a personal attendance plebiscite. That is our first preference. That's the bill we uh, put to the Senate late last year, which was rejected by the Labor Party and the Greens, and we're putting it to the Senate again. We'll be moving a procedural resolution in the Senate tomorrow morning to enable the Senate to debate the bill again. That is our first preference. But let's be realistic. That's not going to get through. Well, we'll be tr we, are, we are, are trying to persuade the crossbenchers to change their mind. And, you know, Lee, the, there are different opinions across the the Australian community on the question of same-sex marriage. I happen to be one of those people who believe that we should reform the law, that we should allow gay people to partake of the institution of marriage. If the Labor Party and the Greens hadn't played politics with this issue late last year and blocked the bill in the Senate, there would have been a plebiscite on the 11th of February, that's six months ago next Friday, and the whole issue would have been sorted then. But everyone's played politics with this issue, haven't we? We haven't. We have not played politics with this issue. We have gone about this uh, in a completely consistent way. For six, you... for six years, sorry to interrupt you, but for six years, the Labor government did absolutely nothing to progress this issue. You say you've not played politics, and yet the original call to go for a plebiscite was due to ructions within your own party. It was a political decision. Well, I'll, I'll leave the commentary up to, to you, Lee, but I believe in a plebiscite because I believe that because there are such deep-seated views in the community about this issue, we want the ultimate resolution of this decision to be a unifying decision. But and and, and that means Senator. involving as many people as possible in making that decision. But you say oh, we have to find out the views of the community. Firstly, there's numerous opinion polls that show that a clear majority of Australians support the legalisation of same-sex marriage. Secondly, politicians are elected because they are supposed to be intimately in touch with the views of everyone in their community. I've, I've heard all those arguments, Lee, and they're very good arguments for almost every issue. But I come back to my initial point that uh, politicians have, have, have no uh, special insight into the workings of the human heart. And this is an issue so intimate, so personal, that it's, it, is, it is almost uniquely the sort of issue that we want every Australian to have their say. Do you believe that a postal plebiscite is constitutionally rock solid and will withstand any legal challenge well, against it? Well, as I, let me just stress that a postal plebiscite is not our first preference. Our first preference is to have the Senate pass the plebiscite bill. And my question now, is, now, will the postal plebiscite... Yes. As to the legality of it, uh, we have acted on Solicitor General's advice in which we are confident. Well, you said in September 2016 when you were asked about a plebiscite on same-sex marriage that if voting were not compulsory, then whichever side was the losing side would be in a position to question the legitimacy of the outcome. Lee, we are going to... Uh, we are designing... Uh, we are following a course of action to give as many Australians as possible the opportunity to have a say. But is that still your position, if, if we, what if, I said if, to you if there? We, if, we, if we pass the plebiscite bill in the Senate this week, then every Australian uh, will attend um, a, a, a compulsory personal attendance plebiscite. If we can't do that, 
The next best option is to go to a postal plebiscite. It is the next best option. Where voting but it's is still... not compulsory. So I'm asking, is your view still consistent my, with what it was in 2016? My view is we should engage as many of the Australian people as possible. Do you in still this... believe... Sorry to keep interrupting, but I just want a clear answer. Do you, right. do you still believe that whichever side is the losing side will be in a position to question the legitimacy of the outcome? I think the more people who get involved in the making of this decision, the better. How many people will have to vote in this plebiscite for the result, if it's a postal plebiscite, for the result to be seen as legitimate? Well, I'm not going to get into speculative commentary on that. Uh, what we want is, in the event that uh, the Senate blocks the plebiscite bill again, which we, I, I profoundly hope it does not, but in the event that it does, we will be encouraging as many people, there are 16 million people on the electoral rolls, we will be saying to them, you should vote, you should have your say. But Australians want to understand you know, how it's going to work. So, for example, let's say only 20,000 Australians show up and 10,500 of those vote yes. Is that going to be enough for a conscience I'm vote? Not going to play the, I'm not going to play these what-if games, Lee. My, my job... My job, and I am a person who believes, as I said before, that we should reform the Marriage Act to enable same-sex couples to marry. My job is to ensure that as many people, as many members of the Australian public, do participate in this great democratic act of public choice. As you point out, you've been consistently pro-same-sex marriage. Yes. Do you think that same-sex marriage will be legal in Australia by Christmas, yes or no? Uh, yes, I do, because I believe that one way or another we will give the Australian people a choice. Um, my prediction, and it's only a prediction, is that in the plebiscite, whichever of the two forms it takes, more people will vote yes than no, and the Prime Minister has said that in the event that there is a yes vote in the plebiscite, he will facilitate a parliamentary vote on a bill to reform the Marriage Act before Christmas. Senator Brandis, thanks for your time this evening. Pleasure, Lee.